Hi everyone, I'm Mark Bradford from Massey University, Wellington School of Design in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And today I'll be presenting my paper, Stretch the Possible, Embodied Ideation During a Global Pandemic with Biwido. I'll be covering two things. Firstly, some background on my research. And secondly, I'll be introducing the Biwido project pre and during COVID. So to start my presentation, some background. Uh, Biwido was inspired by the Japanese martial art of Aikido, and it was developed in the 1920s by Maruhai Yoshiba. Now, it differs in three key ways from other martial arts. Firstly, is it purely defensive art? Secondly, there are constant references to a physical center as the key point for focusing energy. And thirdly, the strategy is always in the form of movements and techniques which are circular. In a nutshell, Aikido people, in Aikido, people communicate by connecting with movement. One of the most interesting things I learned when training in Aikido was that Yuashiba believes that Aikido proactively embodies a mindset which can transfer into constructive action beyond the Aikido dojo and other challenges we face in life. It's about creative leadership. And while traditionally and presently there's an individual at the top the Aikido instructor, which is a form of heroic leadership. Now, and in the future, in terms of Bibido, what I also learned was that creativity in Aikido is embedded in social interactions. And that's all about relational leadership, and there's a big difference. The another thing that was kind of interesting that I learned was Aikido involves more than just learning a set of techniques. Let's say Tommy Sheehan, quote, when someone grabs your wrist, it does not signify the beginning of an attack. It means the beginning of a conversation, unquote. So what is Biwido? So Biwido doesn't involve learning Aikido. Biwido is not Aikido. But what it does is it adapts one movement exercise from Aikido, gets people working in pairs, connecting with each other by the wrist in order to move when they're communicating both physically and mentally with the movement of their partner, with the ideal idea that you're going to try and move conversation to action. So when we think about stretching what's possible creatively, Bibido is the opposite of our experience, which is in the past, which is, a, is that creativity is a very passive process. It's a sitting around writing things on pieces of paper, sort of an experience. You know, the loudest voice in the room is the most important voice for me. The future, when we use Bibido, is it's the opposite. It's an active practice. The approach literally creates space to get everybody moving, physically, mentally, socially, to explore an issue together. And importantly, most importantly, everyone's voice matters. In summary, Bibido uses movement to start, share, and shape conversations within the broad rubric of design thinking. So since completing my PhD in 2016, I've been applying this idea of Bibido internationally. And the approach involves communication as a cooperative activity that transcends an individual. Rather, it's a collective capacity generated in the relationships and interactions among people. And I'm critical of design thinking's focus currently on the mind or the cognitive. And, I, and my belief is that the future and using approaches such as Biwido extends design thinking and creativity involves not just the mind, but the body, mind and environment all together. So here's an example of what I mean. It's a 90 minute time lapse condensed into 30 seconds of a workshop in action. So as you can see, it's more than just the mind. It's a way of navigating the creative moment using all of our senses. So I've been doing it for a while and I've had some great feedback. Of 
For one participant, they said, quote, I thought the moves really enriched the way you thought about the conversation. Am I moving the conversation or are you moving, moving it, unquote? Now, people often talk about their experience being more collaborative than confrontational, which is often the case in the creative sense. And ultimately, Bibido is all about action beyond the self and in relation to other people. And this is interesting because this perspective requires different forms of leadership for designing, approaches that have moved the focus away from an individual heroic designers and towards more relational processes which co-create leadership and offer new understandings, knowledge and orientation. In essence, Bibido creates a safe space for people to connect. Through conversations and movement, people form connections based on common understandings and goals. So to sum up where I was at in 2019, I had my, I'd done some, a bunch of research and my findings were three things really. Firstly, physical movement and touch amplify connection and trust. Secondly, movement enriches conversation. And thirdly, everyone has a creative voice. And then COVID happened. And all of a sudden, this idea of human touch could actually put someone else's health in jeopardy. So within this context, how could I continue to offer people a psychologically safe physical experience as a practice oriented process for structuring embodied ideation? So in response to the pandemic, the Bibido approach needed to adapt quickly and offer new interfaces beyond simply light non-intrusive physical touch. What else could we do? How could it adapt? I started to offer new practices. And so this is an example of a workshop I did where I offered a non-touch version of the Bibido approach. So it's all about non-touch. And of course, as you were watching this, you noticed that we were socially distanced and we were trying to keep to a two meters sort of distance, but it was mostly between one and two meters, but also we were wearing masks. So it was quite different than what it was before. And it kind of worked. Uh, back last year, um, a colleague and I were invited to go to the DRS 2020 and conference. And of course, the first batch of COVID happened and they asked whether we could do a virtual version of our Bibido workshop. And we thought, can we? And then we did some experiments, had to think about it. And we thought, well, maybe we could do the same thing, but use phones. You know, what's happening with Zoom? Can we adapt what's happening elsewhere for what we're doing? The Zoom is really useful. You know, it's enabled people to positively connect you know, get this idea of togetherness during a pandemic that was impossible a few years ago. The downside is that the experience is it can also negatively impact on attention, collaboration, and creativity. So what emerged was the development of an experimental gestural interface. We're still offering hands, but it's in a virtual way. Here's a, here's a snippet of uh, the end of the session where somebody was reflecting on how they felt the session went. Um, Ellen? I think for me, it's it's always wonderful to share a view versus like mm. just talking at someone. Um, obviously, you know, conversation can be um, more accessible that way, especially when we're across time and space. <laughs> Uh, and and running uh, 15 different lives at once these days, especially for new parents. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, what we found was that Bibido had evolved into a way to navigate the creative moment using not only the mind-body environment, but also the body, mind, and virtual environment, which is really exciting. So what it was, was a gestural and motion-based interface prototype that coordinates dynamic virtual movement using the Bibido movements as a catalyst for making connections. 
So what it did is it offered another option for connecting through movement. So when you offer your hand to ideate using Bewido, physically or virtually, small gestures can set bold ideas in motion now in post-pandemic. Thank you very much.